How is that moment? I'm sure we are all looking forward to it. I want to unravel Marina Nieva while also I know a bit of Tosin Coca, but uh, for the record, so uh, Tosin Coca is a filmmaker. He's a Lagosian. Fill in the much. gaps. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, <coughs> I'm from San Francisco and Nigeria, uh, and pretty much I've been making films uh, for over eight years. I come from a family of filmmakers, so it's like it was natural for me to follow on the path of you know the family. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the family business, I guess, is, so to speak. Obviously, you guys, uh, you have a chemistry going on between the two of you. Yes. Is there any biology going on too? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> a professional chemistry, definitely. Yeah. Okay. We uh, happened to meet in Los Angeles, okay. and we attended the same film school in San Francisco. So um, an instructor linked me up with him uh, when he saw a film project that I had in that included scenes in Nigeria. He uh, automatically thought of uh, Tosin Coker, who was one of his best students, and he was very supportive of my vision. And so we decided to to keep the to road together. Yes, definitely. Okay. So yeah. how many works do you have together? Well, that is going to be the first project that we do together. Uh, what happened is that I wrote that script and uh, I sent it to him, and uh, I noticed that he there are some things that he picked up very easily, and I I. I believe this is from his international background that he's both Nigerian and American and so he's really um, he can understand the international and cross African nature of the story uh, I think we have more time to talk about that but that really made me it, this is so that was so exciting because I found someone in the US I could really relate to so you're a crossover filmmaker exactly I think that's so to speak <laughs> and, uh, I, I, and Marina pretty much embodies that too because she has um, experience also in the United States and she has experience in actually in Europe too from Norway and then she's also very passionate about um, Pan-African production so I think it's just a symbiotic relationship between both of us as far as where our visions are going. Mm. Africa is a, pretty much a film hub that's growing and mm. we want to be able to give back to Africa as a whole. That's sounding very patriotic. You steal from them and bring it back home. <laughs> 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 Sounds like robbery. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, you tap from them. Okay, let's use the better word. We tap from them and bring it back here. Mm -hmm, definitely. You know, and then Dig plant it. the seed very nicely and we'll watch it grow and bloom, blossom. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you, you know, go. that's there good. Go. That's good. So for you, when did you make up your mind to say, okay, this is what I want to do? I mean, yes, you come from a family of filmmakers and, you know, Production. It's funny enough, we actually uh, I had this conversation of yesterday with my father, who's a filmmaker too. And uh, like, I grew up in a, in a, in a society where I, mean, I grew up where I, I didn't have the access to film uh, or, or a camera. You know, I mean, I was a kid, so obviously playing around and having fun and make believe was what we did. And I drew a lot. Uh, I decided to go into animation at I think 15. And I did computer animation for years, and it was interesting, but it wasn't as fun as I expected it to be because you're, you're behind the desk like 90 hours a week, just working. And that moment pretty much triggered me going forward to um, study film as a whole. You know, again, the master's degree, different studies and whatnot. You know, and uh, developed into making movie projects and film projects. Whoa! So you will have a master degree. Yeah, yes. Thereafter, I've made films, and uh, we've toured the festival circuit, pretty much Europe and Africa and the United States. So you could say worldwide film festival circuit. I've had films play all over the world, and uh, including also Cannes. In including <laughs> Cannes. Uh, yes, I've had uh, two screenings in Cannes. Uh, have in Spain and uh, in England and in Africa and the U.S. and whatnot. So it's been exciting in South America. Okay, you've mentioned different countries. I'm not hearing Nigeria here. So what has happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nigeria, uh, it would be great to have a screening in Nigeria, but so far the films I've made are not, they are not African stories, so to speak. They are more geared towards the African-American crowd because I've spent more, most of my life there. So that's where I, I guess I've connected with the most. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm detached from my home. I do want to come and give back, and I would really love to be embraced by my own people. So I involved are the both of you in this project? Well, I wrote uh, the story, and um, 
Um, we decided first, uh, I, when I came to him, I was looking for a producer. So, of course, his uh, company and his team have been producing movies, but he's also a director and a good one. So he said, I really like this story and I'd like to, to direct the film too, but uh, I want to be a co-director. So just, we have the creative, we both have the creative contr control over the movie and we, we make the big choices. This movie you're talking about, do you have a working title? For it. Uh, yeah, well, as a working title, and I insist on working, it's just um, the title we use when we, went, we want to name the project so far because you will know the actual title uh, later. Uh, we call it an African romance uh, so far because um, it's, uh, it's a movie that travels all the way from uh, the United States, uh, Côte d'Ivoire, and Nigeria. Travel by air, by sea, by how? <laughs> <laughs> by air and by road <laughs> and by feeling. It's a love story between a character, Alice, and a man named Deji. <coughs> but it's also a love story between Alice and the African continent. Okay. Alice is um, uh, um, both American and Ivorian lady who wants to reconnect with her African roots. And um, she leaves uh, her life in the US behind and comes back to Cote d'Ivoire only to find out that love is waiting for her in Nigeria. I'm so looking yeah. forward to it. Yes. You know why? <laughs> why? Okay. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, oh, before those Nollywood people come with broom, <laughs> 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 it hits me real hard. <laughs> so for Tosin, yeah. Yes, um, the, the storyline is set. Uh -huh. What about the cast? Uh, we're actually approaching uh, some several uh, international slash African talent. So we're looking to Western and African talent at the same time. Um, European and African, American Af uh, Africans. Uh, we're also approaching, uh, we're looking at certain uh, talent in Africa itself. Uh, we're, since it's a Pan African co production, we're looking at Ghana, we're looking at Nigeria. We've looked into Ivory Coast for some of the casting. So it's pretty much going to be an, uh, 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 a synergy. Before this project, what have you been involved in? I've been involved in, uh, I said, several short films and TV pilots. We did a short film, and it was for my thesis graduation. And the school saw this film and they actually adopted this film and they wanted the film to represent the school. So through that, you've gone to like a lot of festivals, got a lot of exposure, and the school started developing a TV show around it. Uh, and then um, <coughs> the same film played in Khan. I met a lot of people through this film. What's the name of the film? Uh, this film is entitled Doorways. Okay. Uh, it's pretty much, uh, it deals with the financial oppression of single mothers in Western society who give up their dreams to make ends meet for their children. And uh, so this film pretty much tore the festival circuit and uh, it got picked up by a national television at Aspire Network, which is uh, Magic Johnson's TV station. And it played all over the United States. And uh, I also got, uh, recently got acquired by uh, an Ivorian company. So it's actually interesting how it's Ivory Coast. It's uh, your Ivory Coast connection. I'm really enjoying it. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, Ivorian company. And they are, have negotiated to have it distributed in Francophone Africa and Francophone Europe. So it's going to be playing in France and Belgium and you know all Francophone Africa also. You know, one um, of those times I was online, I saw this Finding Neptune. Yes. Yeah, and I saw your name on it as well. Yeah. Yes, Finding Neptune is more controversial. <laughs> it was one of my controversial pieces. Uh, you know, I, I look for films that pretty much s subjects that people shy away from. It, it's, I think that people need to reflect some light into certain situations people deal with in life that uh, usually shun or ignore. Hmm. So which one do you want the viewers to watch right now? <laughs> uh, Let's well, give you that. Uh, I think the softer one will be, uh, they could, uh, I love, uh, they could look at uh, the, the trailer for Doorways. Um, okay. This is something that uh, was very big to me. It, it really changed the direction of the course of my filmmaking career. Um, and it, it put me more on a journey to be a better filmmaker than I, 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 I previously was. Okay. Let's see what um, the doorway is all about, right? Yes. Always. Don't waste. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night, we'll be right back. Stay with us. You ever think about leaving? You know, just get the hell out. Mommy, when are the lights coming back on? Simon's the jazz spot on 8th is offering triple time for the 2 to 7 ship. <sighs> just pack up. Never look back. Two to seven. 
fine. I'm afraid you got five hours to get a spick and span. Whole new life. I know you in there! Why are you here? When are you gonna wake up? Would it beat you to death? You are a beautiful woman. That is a true gift. So they make enough piece of shit pay or what? This lawyer got him another six months for financial hardship. You gonna sing? You know, the longer you stay, the more he's gonna do it. The longer he's Those were FSAPs from uh, Doorways. Wow, the cast is something. That, how did you come about those, uh, those kind of people, the caliber of people you have on, on your cast? Yeah, Doorways. I was working for a, a production company that um, we did this Broadway. We were part of a Broadway sh uh, show um, and some other things. So it was, a, it was a pretty big production company. And part of being uh, one of the executives in the company is that you get to meet a lot of talented actors and you have access to cal high caliber actors. Mm -hmm. uh, so with Doorways, I uh, met with an Emmy Award winning actress and she read the script, she really loved it. Her name was Diana Nicole Baxter and she's very, uh, she's an amazing talent and she was really, really uh, monumental in getting the film done. And uh, Alimo Nelson who has like been in private practice and he's been on, uh, uh, he's been on um, House of Lies with Don Cheadle. Uh, he really read the script. He actually wrote the script because I met him while I was at the other f company and he, we, we just hit it off and he decided to write the screenplay for me. And uh, he came on board too and then we met a, f a friend from uh, Tyler Perry's, uh, uh, um, pretty much you can say Tyler Perry's camp and she also wanted to be part of it. So it was just, things just came together and I think it was all in virtue of the company I worked for back then. You see, I'm a bit afraid. You call these names, American names, and I'm uh, wondering, when are we going to feel you? Apart from this, um, <laughs> this, the African romance, an African romance. Yes. yes. Are we going to be seeing more of you here in Nigeria? With the kind of exposure you have, are you really motivated to come back to Nigeria and really pitch your tent here where you really belong? <laughs> I feel Nigeria is definitely developing and there's a lot to actually, uh, uh, there's a lot of stories in Africa as a whole. And mm. I really, um, I'm pretty excited about the potential opportunities that uh, Africa does hold, including Nigeria, uh, being that's my home. Uh, I think if the right opportunities come, I would definitely love to take, you know, get into doing some movies out here to just to export the African experience to the West, which is what, you know, Marina's, uh, our, our passions are for that. We need to export what we have here and cross over to that side so they can tell that, see that there are stories over here too because I believe Hollywood has really much exhausted itself. There's a lot of recycling going on, and there's a lot of content that Africa has to offer, so it could be a resurgence of the film industry as a whole if they can look into Africa, and they need filmmakers to cross over to see that. So for how long have you been in Nigeria? This is only my second trip to Lagos. The okay. first trip um, kind of inspired uh, me the script of this uh, movie. So it's a personal story? Um, well, it's a very personal story story to me it's not my story though okay <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen a movie about an african discovering another african city okay an other african country so i thought this is the story i want to tell hmm. and i'm a big romantic did you in the course of your visits here have you had any cultural shock cultural shock uh, well i wouldn't say so the first time i came here i was really kind of protected uh, because I came to visit friends and they were taking me everywhere. However, the things I, n I noticed is that, um, like, when Lagos is chaotic, it's really chaotic. I mean, it's a level of chaos I, I had never <laughs> seen before. <laughs> <laughs> and also, people are loud. People are loud and um, um, people in the market, they can harass you sometimes. What kind of harassment do you get? I mean, to buy the things, they come after you, they almost more run after more you. More aggressive. They're aggressive. <laughs> They're <children>. aggressive. <laughs> yes. Um, 
but I just noticed and also I mean there were so many people everywhere so it was kind of scary <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also noticed that um, whatever people do being legal or illegal Nigerian people are such hustlers they're so, such hard workers you know hustlers in a good or bad way but they're such hard workers and I really admire that the so for for you Marina yes. um, before this film who was Marina I want to know you a bit more okay well um, I've been working in media and communication for years so I started where, where did you grow up I grew up in Cote d'Ivoire okay. I was born and raised in Cote d'Ivoire okay and I worked for several years in Cote d'Ivoire before traveling to Europe okay. so um, I entered the professional life at an early age like I was 19 um, when I uh, entered the competition and, and got hired uh, in a radio station, leading radio station in Abidjan. Okay. And I started working there and uh, evolved, uh, finally became editorial manager of this um, radio station. Editorial? Yes. This portable <laughs> package. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And, uh, and so uh, I wanted to do, well, besides my work, because my training was uh, media production. So we did at school, we did both radio and television. Television was actually my focus. So um, I saw myself as uh, to be um, a TV director at first. Okay. And But then I had this opportunity and worked for a radio station. But um, besides my work, sometimes I helped on video productions, uh, music videos, short documentaries, and, and, and other stuff. And um, I got tired and I had this opportunity to work for the African Culture Center in Norway. Okay. So I flew to, to Norway where I worked there for uh, two years and then I worked for a TV uh, station, a news channel in France. Hmm. Um, but uh, then I had decided that I wanted to be a filmmaker and focus on fiction. I started, you know, gathering a team in France cast actors and all that and I shot 21 that was my first narrative um, short film okay so it was 26 minutes long so it's pretty surprising when I tell people in America that my first short film is 26 minutes long they say okay wow because <laughs> <laughs> my second short film is three minutes long so um, that was a great great experience this question of short films you know quite a number of um, people don't do short films but I keep hearing short films from foreigners. How come? I think, um, personally, uh, I might be wrong. Uh, I think in, uh, it's the fact of the matter that commerce uh, is pretty much what motivates filmmaking here so far. People make films to make money. Uh, whereas over there, you have the opportunity to experiment and also develop your skills through short film. What making. is the whole idea behind short film? Uh, a short film is a way you can, it's, it's usually a calling card sometimes. You can say it's a calling card. It could be for experimentation. It could be to test out equipment for narrative uh, reasons, to check out dialogue skills of your writing. I think there are just so many uses to short film. You don't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in making the same mistakes you'd have made on a $10,000 or $5,000 short film. So I think that it's something that uh, filmmakers in our culture should look into you know, at this moment and see how we can actually help uh, nurture a short film industry in Nigeria. Sometimes you watch a movie, a two hour long movie, and you bored for like 40 minutes and then it starts getting interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, when you make, when you have the habit, well, not maybe not the habit, but when you've made a short film and you have only 10 minutes to tell a story, you cannot afford uh, wasting the viewer's time for five minutes because after five minutes he switches or he, whatever he does. And um, it really, uh, it's really a school for st story, to test your storytelling skills. Well, that's good. I hope that um, uh, people here will take a cue from this conversation and then start encouraging people to do short films yeah. so that we don't sit in front of a TV and get bored to death. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of sponsorship, you just um, got me, how, how are you funding your film? Well, we're looking into different uh, avenues. Okay. Uh, uh, we're looking, uh, but part of those avenues are we're looking at corporate sponsorships. Okay. Uh, I think uh, they're just great opportunities for African products to actually be showcased in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a non obtrusive way, where we can actually get 
people to see how products in Africa or in Nigeria are being used is enlightening, educational. You don't have to depend on rep repetition and TV advertising to audiences that are, who are usually bored because they know it's a commercial. Okay, so how soon are we expecting this movie? Because I'm so looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm excited. Yeah, we're hoping to start shooting next year. Uh, hopefully first quarter to yes. between first and second quarter of next year. Um, we're, as I said, we're currently looking at sponsorships. So as soon as we can secure enough financing uh, for the picture, we will be straight up into production and we're hoping to get this film out before the end of next year. Yes, definitely. Yes. We have m several people who are already with us, who trust and yeah. believe in us and about we this. We've also gone to Durban, which is actually, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yes, uh, sure. The script was, was, was selected, selected. Among, the, among the 10 uh, best uh, fiction projects in, in Africa, Africa. Wow. Uh, to participate in the Durban Film Art. So we were wow. both uh, in South Africa last uh, July. Uh, promoting the, f the film. So we have interest even to that level where... Okay. That sounds good. That's, uh, that sounds uh, really good. I'm seriously, seriously looking forward to it. And of course, once the film is out, we'll be here again to talk about it. And yeah, then sure. uh, the feedbacks uh, have um, gotten best so far. This is where we'll wrap it up on Saturday night. Thank you so much for... Well, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for coming as well. Thank you.